see them because that's far away. All right, welcome back. Thumbnail, hello, there I am. Hi, everybody, welcome back to our weekly live stream. My name is Alicia, and today we're going to talk about shopping in English, shopping in English. So today I'm going to talk about uh, kind of the flow of shopping in English, how to explain what you're looking for to staff. I'm going to talk about, uh, in part two, uh, talking about the price of an item and paying for an item. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, bargaining or haggling, and then we'll finish today with returns, refunds, and exchanges. So I hope that you find something new. There will be a lot of review in today's lesson, though. Hi, everybody. YouTube is up. Hello, YouTube chat friends. Hello, Dablu and Peso and Ed Nilsson and Alfonso and Arsazu and Joseph and Felis and Kurorabiru no Hito and um, Azazel and Mafu and Hanan. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. Hi, everybody. Thanks very much for joining. Send a message as you arrive in the chat. Facebook is up as well. Good. Hi, Facebook. On Facebook, uh, someone with a Russian name. I'm very sorry. I can't read it, but hello. And Sue Jung and Titch and Abdifa and Din. Hi, everybody. Thanks very much for joining and thanks for sending a message. Much appreciated. As I said, today we are talking about shopping. Today's topic is shopping in English. So I'm going to begin in about uh, two-ish minutes uh, while we give people a chance to join the lesson. Um, in the meantime, a quick announcement, uh, my exciting announcement. I shared, I <laughs> shared this, how am I still so bad at I shared this on Instagram um, last week. If you have not checked the English Class 101 YouTube channel, we have a monthly series there. Um, that we were making last week, actually. As part of the monthly series, we are collecting video and audio recordings from you all, from everybody watching. So um, we were making this uh, last week, but if you want to participate for the next video and you want to send us an audio or video file, please check the monthly review series on the English Class 101 YouTube channel, and there's a link in the description where you can participate. So thank you so much to those of you who have sent your audio and video files so far. It's been really, really cool to hear from people from many different countries, like France and Brazil, Mexico, Azerbaijan. Um, where else have we heard from? I think Malaysia, Pakistan. Indonesia, I want to say. I don't remember if there's an Indonesia one, but I'm not sure. But if you want to participate, please do check the monthly uh, review series video. You can find this on the English Class 101 YouTube. Yeah, so this is every month we talk about ways to learn. We're focusing on um, kind of learning tips and strategies. So definitely check this out on YouTube. Okay. With that said then, let's get into today's topic. I said today's topic is shopping. Uh, so we're going to talk about kind of the flow of shopping in English. So as you join, please don't forget to hit the like button so other people can find the video and share as well. Uh, we really appreciate it. All right, I'm gonna slow down a little bit now. Let's get started with the first part of today's lesson. I want to begin with some review. Before I start this part of the lesson, I want to mention an important grammar point for today. An important grammar point we'll see in this first sentence, or these first two sentences. So here, yeah, here I have uh, explain, explain. By this I mean how to explain what you're looking for. So what do you want? When you come to a shop, how do you explain to staff what you're looking for? So, these two uh, sentences here feature a key grammar point for today. I'm looking for a or an with a singular noun, or I'm looking for no article with a plural noun. So, uh, singular noun and plural noun. So, this means uh, for regular nouns. Uh, with singular nouns, so nouns that take an S in the plural form, uh, and uh, nouns that don't take an S uh, sometimes. I'll talk about this later. But when you're talking about just one of something, you'll need to use this article, a or an. A reminder, we use a uh, before consonant sounds, 
consonant, sorry, hard to read, consonant sounds, and an before vowel sounds, vowel sounds. So vowel sounds is A, E, I, O, U, sometimes Y sounds. So um, make sure to use this article before your singular noun. You do not need to use this article before a plural noun. So nouns that end in S. <clears throat> okay. So this is a basic and easy to remember way to describe what you're looking for. So I'm looking for markers, I'm looking for shoes, I'm looking for a sweater, I'm looking for a watch, I'm looking for an envelope for something, I don't know what. So these are examples, simple examples with just one noun here. If you're looking for something for another person, Person, like you're shopping for a gift, you can use something like this. I'm looking for, and then choose one of these here, I'm looking for a gift, for example, for your person. I'm looking for a gift for my coworker. I'm looking for a present for my father. I'm looking for a gift for my, excuse me, my family member. So these are very simple ways to express what you want. So you can use this uh, in response to a question from staff at shops. Staff at shops will often ask you something like this. Can I help you find anything? Can I help you find anything? Sorry, kind of hard to read, my writing's bad. Can I help you find anything? Can I help you find anything is asking like, is there something you're looking for? Can I help you find anything? So if you are searching for something, you can use one of these patterns. If you're not, you can say, no, I'm okay. That's totally natural. No, I'm okay. So please send some example sentences and I'll try to check them in the chat today. Uh, please keep in mind, we use these when uh, shopping, really. So I think someone mentioned, I'm looking for a doctor. Um, that's, the sentence is like correct, but we might use that um, when we're like at an information uh, hub, I suppose. So maybe a little different situation um, than today's lesson. Uh, I'm looking for a gift for my husband. Nice one, Mina. Um, I'm looking for a chinchilla. That's very specific, Raphael. Okay, nice one. Uh, I'm looking for, ah, great, Slavenko on Facebook, thanks for that. I'm looking for a gene for my father. I mentioned there are some kind of special nouns that we use um, in the plural form. So, genes is one of them. So, some special ones to think about right here. Genes, we use in the plural form. We do not say a gene, we say genes. Like there are two legs and it's one piece. So we don't use um, an article with that. So jeans is one. Pants is another one. We always use this S at the end. Jeans, pants, no article. Another one, uh, sunglasses, sunglasses. So here, again, this ES at the end makes it a plural. We always use this S sound at the end. Great, I'm looking for a super cool watch. Nice, I'm looking for a present for my wife. Good, everybody's got some nice sentences. I'm looking for a pair of shoes. Diego, nice point. Another kind of special noun. When you're looking for shoes, you can say, I'm looking for shoes. That's great, and the plural here. Or you can say, I'm looking for a pair of shoes. A pair of means two of something. Great, okay. Nice one, those look pretty good to me. So I'm gonna continue to the next part for today. The next part for today, if you find something you like. So this is especially for clothes, I should point this out. Uh, for clothes, for clothes. You can use this expression, can I try this on? Can I try this on? You find a shirt or you find a watch, you find a hat or something. You want to ask the staff, can I try this on? Can I try this on means try this on my body. Can I try this on? In most cases, it's not a problem. Can I try this on is the expression you need to know. Uh, that's pretty much, I would say, maybe one of the only ways we ask this question. Can I try this on? Then, <clears throat> let's imagine 
you're trying on clothes, you're trying on shoes, whatever it is, and you need something different from the item you chose at first. Here is one pattern you can use and a few ways to change the pattern. It is, do you have this in a size? Do you have this in a number? Or do you have this in color? So let's imagine you try on a shirt. You're trying on a shirt and you realize uh, the size, it's too small. Your shirt is too small. So you use this you, you, when you talk to the staff person. It means do you at your store have this item? This item means the item I'm trying on now. So usually we point or we like grab the item somehow. Do you have this in size, in size? So we usually will use an article with this one in a medium. Do you have this in a medium, in a small, in a large? So choose a size. Do you have this in an extra small? So again, that article there, an extra small. Um, you can ask with this, you can ask about a number too. So if you're searching for like pants, for example, a waist size, like do you have this in a 40? Do you have this in a 32? Do you have this in a 27? So you can use a number here as well. You could change the color if you want. Do you have this in blue? Notice with color, there's no article here. Do you have this in blue? Do you have this in green? Do you have this in red? There's no article when we use color. When we talk about size, we will use an article. Do you have this in a 29? So this is kind of an interesting small point. Nice, can I try this shirt? Yes, uh, Thu Tran on YouTube said, can I try this shirt? Yeah, can I try on this shirt or can I try this shirt on? Both are okay. Uh, do you have this one in a small? Perfect. Do you have this shirt in pink? Nice, pink. Okay. Um, what else? Do you have this in medium? That's okay, too. Do you have this in medium or do you have this in a medium? Nice. Um, do you have anything else? Something like this. Good. Uh, someone wrote that in Facebook. That was nice. <clears throat> great. Nice examples. Do you have this in 44? Okay, great. I think you guys have got it. Yeah, check out the chat. There are some really nice examples. Uh, do you have this in color? And so when I wrote color here, I mean, please choose a color uh, here. Like, choose the color. Do you have this in blue? Do you have this in red? Do you have this in black? So please use that. Okay, nice sentences, everybody. Let's take a break for now. That's the first part, a little bit of review. Nice examples. Let us take a break. As always, we have free stuff for you guys. Let me find Ta -da, the perfect free thing for this lesson. I will show you over here. Yes, okay, I'll show you over here. Uh, I'm talking about, I'm focusing today a lot on shopping for clothes. So this is a great little bonus for your vocabulary for clothing. So I just talked about how there are some vocabulary words we use S with, like number four here, pants. Uh, but this has some key clothing vocabulary uh, that you'll notice sometimes is in the singular or in the plural, like number five here, shorts, for example. That's always in the plural form. So this is a free thing. There's another page I'll show you later uh, again. Um, but this is a free thing, a free PDF, along with a whole bunch of other. This is, this is a great one for today's lesson. But we have lots of other ones, uh, like for food and for travel and for visiting school. There's a business one as well. Um, these are all for free. You can download these for free. If you're watching on YouTube, the link is below the video in the description box. If you're watching on Facebook, the link is above the video in the description box, not the chat box. So this is great um, to practice your vocabulary for clothing, for clothing. So these singular and plural things I was talking about here, you can get some more ideas from this one. All right, good. Let's continue on. Great, let's get back to the lesson for today then. If you are just joining us, today's lesson is about shopping in English, shopping in English. I started with explaining what you're searching for and trying something on. All right, uh, so please don't forget, 
Yeah, send along your example sentences in the chat. I will try to check for now. Let's continue on. I'll move over here. Let's continue on to talking about um, price and payment, price and payment. So asking about the price. In, ooh, in, most, uh, in most shops, uh, you will probably notice the price is clearly displayed, like there's a price tag on something. Um, so you probably won't need to ask these questions a lot, but just in case, just in case, this is the basic way to do it. How much is this? How much is that? How much is this? How much is that? This is the pattern for singular nouns, for singular nouns. So there's one of something. How much is this? How much is that over there? So this thing close to me, that thing over there, far away from me. If you're talking about something, there are two or more of that thing, use are these or are those. So this is for your plural noun. If you have a plural noun, how much are these things? How much are those things? How much are these? How much are those? So these are the basic patterns you can use. If you want to ask something a little more specific, like there are maybe two or three of something and you want to know if there's a special sale or a special deal, you can try this. How much for, how much for number of these or those? So let's imagine, I don't know, socks, for example. You're shopping for socks. You ask the staff, how much for four of these? How much for four of those, like pairs of socks? How much for three of these? So sometimes there's a special price if you buy in a group. So how much for number? Nice, all right. So this is perhaps a review. Okay, um, someone said this or these. It depends, it depends. So as I said, this is used for singular nouns. There is one of that noun. How much is this sweater, one sweater? How much are uh, these, meaning two, three, or more sweaters? So it's one or it's more than one. This, these. <clears throat> okay. Um, another couple of expressions you can use when you're asking about price are these two. This is a good keyword for today. Is this on sale? Is this on sale? On sale. On sale means special price. Special price. So on sale, special price or special discounted price. Is this on sale? You can change this part right here. Is this one item? Is that one item? To are these on sale? Are those on sale? You can apply the same grammar point here. So on sale means a special price. Another thing um, that you will see is this sort of pattern. So for example, these are 50% off. Oh, sorry, I made a question, but you can make a statement too. 50% off. Off means a discount, the discounted rate. So these are 50% off, so half price in other words. You'll see this 30% off, 40% off, 70% off. So off means removed from the price, 50% off. <clears throat> How much is this video? This video is free for you. <laughs> okay. Um, so something um, someone asked in the chat, I noticed uh, on a shopping lesson we did, was after you check the price and you learn the price, how do you decide? What's the expression you use to say, okay, I want that thing? You can use something like this. Okay, can I have number of these, for example? Like, okay, can I have two of these? Or, okay, can I have one of those, for example? So you can agree with this. Another expression you can use is, I'd like number, please. Okay, I'd like three, please. Okay, I'd like one, please. So this is a quick, easy way, sorry, a quick and easy way to decide uh, and to express your decision. Okay, this, please or okay, two, please, two of these, please. Okay, um, how much are these pens? Nice, good. Um, 
Please check my sentence. I don't see your sentence, Sonia. Um, can you give a discount? Oh, thanks. Thanks, Control Desk. Are these in 50% off? No, are these 50% off? Are these 50% off? So if you want to use this as a question, uh, are these, in this case a plural, 50% off? No preposition there. So here there's no preposition. Just use your percentage there. Uh, all right, good. I don't see anything else. Do you have something similar in a lesser price? Uh, Juampi on Facebook, do you have something similar at a cheaper price? Uh, or do you have something similar for cheaper? For cheaper. Um, I'll include that here. Do you, or even shorter, do you have anything cheaper? I think this would be the most natural way to express this. Do you have anything cheaper? Do you have anything cheaper? Uh, what is it? Sorry. I, if I want the seller to reduce the price, how can I tell him? I will explain in just a moment <laughs> with a cautionary note. Okay. Um, and then I will come back to that. Yes, I promise. It's over there. Uh, when you decide to pay, um, I have two patterns that you can use, just because I want to make a couple points here. Um, first, you can use this one after you decide. Okay, I'll pay with cash. You'll notice I can use with, or I'll pay in cash. We use both with and in. There's not really a difference in meaning here. Okay, I'll pay with cash, or I'll pay in cash. Uh, if you are not using cash, can I use a card? Can I use a card or can I use my card? <clears throat> this is the natural way to ask this. Or I'll use a card. Another grammar point here is this I'll. I'll pay with cash, I'll pay with a card. Because you've just decided. Okay. Um, all right. Let's, let me see what time it is. 22, ah, okay. So let's take one more break. I'm gonna move along to bargaining and haggling next. If you missed it before, I will share it again. Um, today I'm focusing on shopping and clothes shopping a bit. I showed this earlier, but since many of you are asking this question, on the back of this PDF right here, right here, it's blurry, sorry, uh, are some questions we have talked about. Do you have this in a different color I talked about earlier? Wah! Uh, and here too, do you have this in a bigger size? Do you take credit cards? These are some similar questions. So we've talked a little bit about these today. Down here, there are a few uh, verbs you can use with shopping. I'm using these in today's lesson. So if you'd like to review, take a look here. So, ah, sorry, it's a bit blurry. But uh, you'll find that and then some color words down here at the bottom. So these are just a couple of uh, little things you can hopefully um, find some new questions um, and some new vocabulary words um, relating to shopping from. So check that out. And of course, as always, there's lots of other free stuff uh, from the link too. So go download. You can download this from the link below the video on YouTube and above the video on Facebook. Alrighty. Moving along, if you're just joining, uh, don't worry, the lesson is being recorded, so you can check this out on Facebook or on YouTube anytime. We're talking about shopping in English. I'm going to finish today's lesson by talking about uh, bargaining a little bit, and I'm gonna talk about returns, refunds, and exchanges. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm trying to check your chat, but please keep in mind I can't check everything because uh, there's a lot of comments. I'm watching Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So uh, let's continue on for now though. Before I begin this next part about bargaining and haggling, I wanna say uh, we have these expressions in English, but it is not part of our shopping culture in North America anyway to bargain a lot or to haggle a lot. Uh, perhaps at a small privately owned store, like you have a relationship with the owner um, or it's like a local shop, you may be able to ask for a discount, but we do not have a strong bargaining or haggling culture in North America. 
So if you go to a mall somewhere or if you go shopping somewhere and you try to ask for a discount, it might not be a good situation. Like we just don't have the same culture of this as other countries do. So please keep that in mind um, when you're shopping. Um, that being said, a couple vocabulary points here. Um, I know there's a question I've seen a few times about this. What is the difference between a uh, bargain? Uh, oh, sorry, I should have written bargaining. Bargaining and haggling. So to haggle is a verb. To haggle. To haggle means to discuss the price, to try to get a lower price. Um, so we have this as a verb, to haggle or haggling, um, to talk about that action. To bargain, to bargain uh, is also a verb. To bargain and to haggle as verbs have the same meaning, yes. But as a noun, a bargain, a bargain a bargain means a good price, a good price. So like if I'm shopping and I find this great phone, I'm like, oh wow, this phone, it's so cheap, that's a bargain. I would express that, this is a bargain. So you might see like bargain sale on advertisements. That means this stuff is a good price. So a bargain is a good price. So that's a, a difference between bargain and haggle. As verbs, they share, they share the meaning. With that said, if you decide you want to try to ask for a discount, you can use something like this. How about plus your price suggestion. So you learn over here, how much is this? How much is that? Uh, it's $20. You say, mm, how about 15? How about 10? How about five? You can use this very direct way to try to get a discount. You can use something like this to get a discount for a group, like how about five for $50? Or how about two for $20? So in this pattern, how about number for price? So number here means the number of items you want. Uh, how about three for 30, for example? So this is uh, just a quick way to ask for like a bulk. This is something that we call a bulk price. So bulk price <clears throat> means the total amount for a group of something. Bulk price, okay. Um, good, so you can try to use that if you like. Another one, the direct one, I think maybe many of you know is can you give me a discount? Can you give me a discount? So quite direct, can you give me a discount? Um, your results may vary. Results may vary means depending on the situation, you may or may not be successful. May I have a discount is also okay. May I have a discount? Uh, can I have a discount? And so on. Uh, Alicia, do you bargain? No, I do not, I do not. Like I said, we don't have a culture really of bargaining or haggling in North America. Um, yeah, so this is how to do it. Like I said, I don't, I don't do this uh, and I'm not sure um, how common it is, but perhaps in small local shops you can do this. Okay, thank you. Let's move on to our last points for today. Um, the last points for today are about returns, refunds, and exchanges. We'll finish here. So what's the difference? Um, the difference return and refund when you return an item to the store, it's like you purchased an item. Here's, here's an iPad. So I purchased this iPad and I found a problem with this iPad. So I want to take it back to the store. So just taking the item back to the store is a return. So I'm returning this item to the store. A refund, however, this word, a refund, it can be used as a noun or as a verb. A refund means receiving your money back. So you get money back from something. In some cases, you cannot get a refund. Um, maybe like the, the problem is your fault or maybe you don't have a receipt. Or, um, or maybe what you'll find sometimes is uh, the refund is in store credit. This is an interesting maybe vocabulary word. Store credit. So hopefully you can get your money back, uh, you can get your money refunded, 
but sometimes you receive store credit instead of your money. So store credit is like getting a gift card, kind of, for the store only, meaning you have to spend your money in the store in the future. So store credit. So if you want to make a return, you can use this expression. I've used this for each of these last example sentences. I'd like to, I'd like to, I'd like to. Oh, sorry, not this one. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to return this. So the response to this will usually be, do you have the receipt? Do you have the receipt? And I use the here because it's a receipt specific for, sorry, specifically from that item. Do you have the receipt uh, that you had when you purchased this item? Do you have the receipt? If you say no, you probably cannot return the item, honestly. So do you have the receipt? The last word for today, and then we'll finish up, is I'd like to make an exchange, an exchange. So let's imagine that like you buy this iPad and it's a gift for someone and they say, oh, I didn't want a black iPad, I wanted a silver iPad. So a silver iPad? I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. But they decide I want a different color and you go, oh, okay. Well, I just want a different color. I want to exchange this for a different color or a different size. So you like the item, but you need to make a change to the item. This is called an exchange, an exchange. I'd like to make an exchange is like a set phrase, to make an exchange. And again, the question here will probably be, do you have the receipt or maybe do you have your receipt? Um, if you just want to give the item back, you can say, I'd like a refund. I'd like a refund. I want my money back. I want my money back is kind of a direct, exp a direct expression. So I'd like a refund, please, is a bit more polite. Yeah, give me my money back is a little bit direct. <laughs> so you'll sound angry if you say, give me my money back. But if you say, I'd like a refund, please, when you return an item, it's much softer, not so aggressive. So I recommend that. All right. Uh, someone says the iPad can be returned in 14 days if it has no damage. Good to know. <laughs> All right. Good to know. Is that true? I don't know. Um, but we'll finish up there for today. So that's a quick introduction to shopping in English. Um, if you have any other questions, please do send them in the chat on YouTube or on Facebook. That would be great. I will check the chat after this lesson. I'll go and check this. Um, so please let me know if you have other questions. I'll check them out. In the meantime, uh, we'll be back next week. Next week we will be back. It will be oh, October 31st, Halloween. Woo. Um, we'll be back at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Wednesday. Um, that's New York City time. Our topic for next week will be talking about media. Talking about media, that means like TV, movies, books, how to talk about your opinion, uh, something you saw recently, for example. So we'll be talking about media for next week's lesson. So please join us again next week. That would be fantastic. In the meantime, please be sure to go download your free stuff from the link from the link below the video um, on YouTube, above the video on Facebook. And also please do check out the monthly review series on the English Class 101 YouTube, and then you can send your video or audio file to us and maybe be in next month's video. That would be really fun. So thank you as always for joining our weekly lesson. This was fun as always. Thank you for liking and sharing the video. We really appreciate it. Um, and I hope you have a good day, a good night. Enjoy your weekend, and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.